All right, let's shift our attention over to China, where protests have erupted in several major cities, and it's all over the country's extreme COVID lockdown measures. Joining us now for more is the author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang, with us this morning. Gordon, good morning. Good to have you back on. Um, hope you had a great holiday. I I'm wondering what you make of these protests. Uh, really unbelievable to see this happening in China. Um, what's the future of the Communist Party in China, and specifically President Xi? Does he survive this? You know, they may survive it, Xi Jinping and the Communist Party, um, this round of protests, but I don't think they're around for very long. And the reason is we have seen that the Chinese people don't want them. Now, they have been coerced. You know, China has that mass surveillance state, as Kelly just said. But the point is that when they can express their views, they do so. They are angry. They are defiant. They are fearless. And that's really bad news if you're a dictator in China. Yeah, but Gord, how dangerous is that? Is that for, for these folks to be protesting right now? They could lose their lives. Yeah. Um, you know, China is, you know, is that total surveillance state, which means they've got artificial intelligence. They've got uh, maybe 600 million surveillance cameras. So they can identify everybody in these protests. You know, whether they will or not, that's another story. But the point is they've got the capability to do it. And the Chinese people know that they have the capability to do it. So they're doing this at great risk to themselves. And we have seen over the last three or four weeks in other circumstances, the Chinese people helping protesters, helping workers and putting themselves at great risk for doing so. Yeah, a population of 1.4 billion, too. Uh, so difficult to surveil a, a population that large and, and just the size of these protests. Um, can you put this, Gordon, into historical context um, for our friends at home right now? I, when I saw this over the weekend, I thought in 1989, um, the massacre at Tiananmen Square uh, and sort of the, the comparison between that and then what happened in the late 1940s in China as well. Yeah. Many people say that this is 1989. And of course, there are many similarities to the Tiananmen protests. But we got to remember that in 1989, the Chinese people were supportive of the Communist Party, including the protesters. All they wanted was the party to relax a little bit and to get rid of some of the hardline leaders like Premier Li Peng. This is more like 1949. And 1949, the communists actually took over China in the face of a superior force, the nationalists of Chiang Kai-shek. And the reason is because, as a great Chinese historian, Yu Yong Shi has said, the Chinese, the, the nationalists had lost people's hearts. And so the nationalists, although they had the tanks, they had the guns, they had more soldiers, they had more of everything, they just failed. And that's, I think, what we're going to see now. The Communist Party, despite all of its superior resources, is going to fail. Hmm. Gordon, the BBC says Chinese police assaulted and detained its reporter uh, at a protest in Shanghai. Do you know anything more about this? Yeah, the, the party is saying that the reporter didn't identify himself. And so um, this was a big mistake. But of course, the Communist Party knows who they're detaining. Um, and, and so uh, this is just in trying to intimidate the BBC like they try to intimidate all the press. Yeah. The one, th the one thing that's important here is that we know less and less about China because foreign journalists are being turfed out of the country and they're being intimidated and coerced, just like right now with uh, the BBC. So, Gordon, here's a, just a question. Why does President Xi, three years later, don't forget they were dealing with COVID first, uh, so they've been dealing with this for, for three full years now. Why does he still support these just ridiculous, foolish lockdown measures? Uh, and, and does this mean, hey, he goes and does something crazy like invades Taiwan as a, uh, as a distraction? Yeah, he could very well. If, if these protests take a long time, um, certainly Xi Jinping could try to distract the Chinese people by um, some sort of military misadventure abroad. If he goes quickly, that's a great scenario for us because it means he doesn't have the opportunity to do that. You know, and, and right now, I, I think what we are seeing is the Communist Party not knowing what to do. You know, Xi Jinping is the author of the COVID-19 policies, the zero covid and so he cannot allow criticism of that because that's criticism of him. And also, in the early months of the pandemic, the Communist Party made its control of the disease a test of its legitimacy. So it cannot allow cases and deaths because that means that the Communist Party doesn't have the right to rule. Yeah. They have sort of hung themselves on their own petard. All right, Gordon, we'll leave it there. Uh, pretty clear, the people of China, and refreshing, I think, to some extent, to see this. Uh, the people have had enough. Gordon Chang, I know you'll stay on top of it. Thanks so much for bringing us up to speed.
Thank you. Thank you.